Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because today is part three of working on our Damascus Steel Kopesh for the Liam Hoffman collaboration. That's right, this is a collaboration with Liam Hoffman. His channel link's in the description below. And today, we're going to be forging the blade of this Egyptian Kopesh. Thank you for joining me. Let's hit the drawing board. So what do we have here? Well, overall length 26 inches, thank you Wikipedia. Blade length 20.5 inches, thank you uh, Wikipedia actually just said length of 20 to 26 inches. So, overall length 26 inches, fantabulous. This is the Kopesh. It has all these weird shapes, it's got a curve here, and the edge as far as I understand is right here on this curve. That's gonna be fun to grind, hope you're, uh, hope you're looking forward to that Liam. Oh, and here's the best! The best part's behind my head. That's an integral bolster. That's an integral pommel. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, I just have to work out how to forge it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know how I'm gonna forge this. So, uh, this is the drawing board and the phrase, let's go to the drawing board. Well, I've already gone to the drawing board. Where do we go now? Sadly, to a hammer. Now, my, uh, my general rule of thumb is, if in doubt, hit it with a hammer. Right now, I'm actually gonna put Oh! 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 I'm bleeding. So my general rule of thumb is if in doubt, hit it with the hammer. However, in this particular case, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off a little small slice. So as you can see on the end there of the ferry, actually, I was told by knife maker Nick Wheeler Knives and Youths that in fact, this is a Felicietti flip. Apparently he's the one that came up with it. Felicietti. Felicietti! I can work with that. We, yes, 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 we can work with that. Now I know what you're thinking, Alec, you haven't particularly explained why it is that you took a slice off that nice bit of the Damascus. Well, the reason's as follows. That guard, or the bolster, whatever you want to call it, that integral guard, integral bolster, that is gonna need a little more mass than we currently have in the bar. So indeed, the first step is locking this puppy in the vise, that as hard as I physically can. And what I'll do is I'm gonna take my uh, oxypropane heating set, and with this what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an isolated heat kind of in this area here, and we're gonna upset some material into it. Now what is upsetting? Well, upsetting is where you're mean to the piece of steel, um, and then as a result, it swells. Now what is mean to the steel? Uh, this could probably be classed as mean to the steel. Yep. Indeed, once it is hot and we hit on the end, that isolated heated part is gonna work itself into itself, and it'll get thicker. That's a process called upsetting. All right, let's give her a go.
Okay, so I have upset some mass there, which is gonna work nicely for the guard. I'm starting to be a little bit hesitant as to how well the integral pommel's gonna work. I might not have enough material for that, we'll see. For now, however, and I don't have to make the decision on the pommel yet, I'm going to work on the isolation here between the blade and the guard on the blade side of the guard. It is in the forge, and I'm gonna run to the light green power hammer over there. It has a little narrower dies, and that means I'm going to be able to get in there, work it down some, get a better idea of how well that's isolated. I'm going to see about upsetting some material to where the pommel is. We'll see how it works. Alrighty ho, what do we have here? We have our integral bolster, our integral pommel, and the tang that goes between them. We have that all roughed out. I am so thrilled to say that with a little extra, little extra upsetting, I even went to the vise, I was able to get enough material into the pommel area. I think that we're gonna be okay. Ow, that is hot, don't touch it. I think we're gonna be okay. I also began reducing material for the blade itself. And you can see, we have it mounted in the vise. And this is why I'm really nervous. This needs an extreme bend here and an extreme bend here. And I'm gonna do it now while that is about two to three times as thick as the finished thing will be. Because I am indeed petrified that I'm going to tear open the welds and I wanna make the bends while it's thick because I think it's gonna be stronger and be able to handle this extreme bend. You realize what we're doing is we are are making two 90 degree bends so close to each other on material that's only just been welded. This is a daunting moment. This could very easily fail right now and that would be a serious, serious problem. Another thing to bear in mind is I need to work out where to put the bends considering we're two to three times thicker than we will be at the end. I think kind of right about here is gonna be our first bend. Our second bend maybe kind of a little further out, you know, maybe a little closer to the pommel with our first bend. We'll see. The historical examples of the Egyptian Kopesh that I found on the internet are very varying in the dimensions and the proportions. So I have a little bit of flexibility to work with, but I do want this thing to look good. <laughs>
dokely. So those bends went pretty, pretty well. I'm here at the, uh, the far edge of the anvil, and I'm just gonna be forging this little kind of nub that's on the end of these kopeshes. I'm gonna be forging that down over the far edge of the anvil. Overall, how is this going? What, what am I experiencing? Well, this is really difficult. This is such a difficult forging to work on. It may indeed be one of the most complex forgings I've worked on in the context that not only is this a piece of steel, but this is a piece of steel made of Damascus that I've already spent four days working on. I put, you know, a hell of a lot of time in there. And I have to go send this off to Liam Hoffman, link in description, for him to go make a badass sword out of it once it's forged. There's so much at stake, and that is certainly very exciting. Um, but this is a tough project. We got that little nub forged up, but as you can see, it is very thick and very short in length. What we're gonna go ahead and do to fix that is we are gonna run to the power hammer. Don't run in the Kopeshes, kids and we are going to draw it down. That's going to be reducing the width. And of course, because forging is the process of moving material around as opposed to necessarily just cutting it off of that, that is going to lengthen it. Gee whiz, I'm exhausted. Right, into the forge we go. So where do we stand right now? It still needs some drawing out, the tang still needs some cleaning up, the transitions between the bolster and the pommel, stuff like that still needs cleaning up, but it's late right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that tomorrow with fresh hands and fresh eyes. I'm gonna do a better job of cleaning this all up. Make sure that you go and subscribe to Liam Hoffman's channel. His link is in the description below. The pattern on this is unbelievable. And let me tell you, when you see him finish this thing off, you're gonna be so pleased that you went and subscribed. So make sure that you do that. And if there are any video-minded peeps of you out there, there is also a link in the description. Exciting, uh, exciting little opportunity. Perhaps join the team, come run a camera, come edit some video, come hang out and, uh, and be awesome. There's a link in the description for that too. Most of all, have a fantastic day. I'm gonna go get some rest and I'll see you tomorrow on the next episode. What are we doing tomorrow? We're gonna be finishing this thing off. As I said, you know, fresh hands, fresh eyes, it'll make it go better and then we'll start continuing on with the other projects we have going on at the shop. I'll see you then.